been doing it the same way for a long, 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 long time. Hi, and thanks for watching. In this video, I'll share three stories about how not all that long ago, being gay could get you vilified, arrested, and even sat on. First, we'll look at a BBC News clip from 1988. Two women crashed a broadcast to protest a law banning even the mention of homosexuality in classrooms. This is how their protest went down on TV. The Six O'Clock News from the BBC with Sue Lawley and Nicholas Witchell. Good evening, the headlines at six o'clock. In the House of Lords, a vote is taking place now on a challenge to the poll tax. Tory rebels have said that the tax is unfair and unpopular. Lord Whitehorse Whitehall told them they should not be confronting the elected chamber. Another prosecution involving undercover police and alleged football hooligans has collapsed. No evidence was offered. And repairing the roads. Why the codes homes signal a lot more chaos this summer. And I do apologise if you're hearing quite a lot of noise in this studio at the moment. I'm afraid that um, we have rather been invaded by some people who we hope to be removing very shortly. In the meantime, if you can possibly ignore the background news, we'll bring the news as best we can. What happened that was so reprehensible during that broadcast occurred off camera. The screams you hear aren't protests, but pleas for help. The broadcast's male co-anchor had thrown one of the women to the floor and then sat on her. Yes, sat on her. All while the camera kept rolling and the female anchor went on reading the news. Our second story involves a syndicated newspaper column. Dear Abby wasn't the only one dishing out sage advice back in the day. Many newspapers around the country carried the column of Dr. George Crane. Dr. Crane began his career writing speeches for President Calvin Coolidge. He also founded the first computer dating service in the 1950s. A favorite topic of his was how to prevent teens from falling prey to homosexuals. This column from 1973 details how lesbians will prey upon and seduce college-age daughters. And he supplies his reader with ample, titillating details. He urges that parents should examine all aspects of college life. Double beds in dorms are a big, big no-no. Once the lesbian has a place in the unwitting daughter's bed, she will addict the young woman to her touch. <gasps> Dr. Crane offers his readers further details for a quarter and a self-addressed stamped envelope. For this episode's third and final story, let's examine a case of mass hysteria. American politicians from the mid-20th century saw homosexuality as a threat equal to communism. This brought about several witch hunts called Lavender Scares. The most well-known Lavender Scare occurred at the U.S. State Department in the late 1940s, but another bizarre and scary Lavender Scare swept through the small city of Boise, Idaho in 1955. This clip from a 1965 60 Minutes episode describes what happens. In 1955, there were reports of a homosexual underworld in Boise, Idaho. Population at the time, 34,000. The people of Boise tried to stamp out homosexuality. They discovered it couldn't be done. In the learning process, everybody suffered. It began with this headline in the Idaho Daily Statesman. The next day, the paper ran an editorial entitled, Crush the Monster, Crush Homosexuality. The year-long investigation that followed shook Boise to its foundations. Everyone was suspect. Men were afraid to be seen together. Weekly poker games among men who had known each other for years were canceled. There were reports that many high school boys were involved. A prominent banker, a leading attorney, were arrested, along with clerks, repairmen, salesmen. Altogether, hundreds were interrogated in this house on a quiet residential street. When it was over 15 months later, one homosexual was in a state penitentiary with a life sentence. Two received 15-year terms, one 10 years, two 7 years and scores of lives were ruined. Another newspaper, the Idaho State Journal, took a more rational approach to the story. This article ran a few weeks after the initial investigation. The newspaper quotes the local prison warden as saying he doesn't like the idea of a homosexual roundup, 
he questions the wisdom of arresting and imprisoning homosexuals, and he claims that, in his experience, homosexuality cannot be cured. Then, on December 14th, the State Journal reports further dragnet drama. One man caught in a sting had been previously certified cured of homosexuality. Now, he was back in jail. And in this article printed later in December of that same year, the warden was sure to point out that the prison houses homosexual suspects one to a cell, so they can't get up to their deviancy. The Crush the Monster investigation spared few. In this article, a bank executive pleads guilty to homosexual acts. Nine years later, the Idaho State Prison released the one man sentenced to life in prison. He was the last of those found guilty to get out of prison. That's the end of this episode of Sex, A History. Join us again as we delve into our past to show that though laws, attitudes, and emphases change, once we're in the bedroom, we've been doing it the same way for a long, 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 long time. Check out our G Plus page for frequent updates with images, videos, and news from our collective sexual past. <laughs>